people get sucked in. Right. And then they get scared forever. And if you don't ever give them good data and you're always exaggerating the threat and exaggerating the death number and exa- – Dr. Lena Wen, who was like the biggest proponent of, you know, shut everything down, shame the, the unvaccinated, uh, cast them out of mm-hmm. society, all that. Now she's saying that they, they – what is like her? She had a recent article where she said they overestimated the amount of people that actually died from COVID. And I think she said the real number is about 30% of what they're claiming. Oh, you're kidding. Oh, wow. Because when you die of COVID, if you also have cancer, if you're dying of something else, but you test positive for COVID, they call it a COVID they death. They call it a COVID death. Yeah, I remember reading that. Like yeah. Even accidents and even people that like – because there was a financial incentive. Yeah. It was just part of the problem. Dr. Lena Wen slammed after admitted there's been an overcounting of COVID deaths two and a half years late. Wen claimed the actual COVID-19 death could be only 30% of what's currently reported. There's also been, I mean, I don't know how the system exactly works, but there, there's been doctors that explained what incentive there is to put someone on a ventilator, what incentive mm-hmm. there is to prescribe remdesivir. Because pres- it all, it's yes. all financial decisions, exactly. right? Yeah. Because of the emergency use authorization, yeah. because of the pandemic, there's all these. And when, when you have money involved, things get fucking squirrely. Always. They get real weird. And, Always. And then I didn't realize, like, I'm so ignorant. I didn't know that most hospitals or a large number of hospitals are privately owned. Mm. They're yeah. businesses. Yeah. I was like, what? Yeah, you're like, wait a minute. I thought, like, where's this money coming from? Something yeah. that, like, the government funds so that right. we all take care of each other. Not nope. here, not nope. in this country. No. Yeah, no. Yeah, and then I, you have the fact that pharmaceutical companies are responsible for 75% of the ads on television. Really? Yes. 75%? 75% Holy of the ads on television. We're one of two countries on earth that allows pharmaceutical companies to advertise. I had no idea. The other one is New Zealand, and they're far more restrictive than we are. Hmm. And yeah, so you have like so much so financial much incentive. And then mm-hmm. every, and we lost people in terms of like losing their mind and their anxiety that never came back. Yeah. It's the other thing Lena Wen said, the f- cloth masks are essentially facial coverings. Like she didn't say that at the beginning of the pandemic, mm-hmm. but she said it recently. Interesting. On CNN, they're like, oh. oh they must have been very upset. What? Yeah. Well, I think she's realizing that her reputation is at stake. I see. And she's got to actually report real facts. Yeah. And so that like – and also the writing on the wall. Like when we're looking back at this from five years from now or 10 years from now, we're looking at adverse reactions and we're looking at all these different things and, mm-hmm. and what we did to kids, how we stunted their development right. and by masking everybody and keeping them at home. The whole thing's nuts. And it was a very mild pandemic in terms of like the Spanish of what it flu could have been. and the right. Black Plague right. and the, the horrific pandemics of the past. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah very true. I, uh, one of my best friends sadly passed away during COVID in, in a rock climbing accident, oh. um, not from COVID. But when he went to the hospital, he was climbing in Utah, fell without his helmet, and did his skull in. And um, it was terrible. Tommy Dutra, he was one of my best friends, amazing guy, incredible athlete. Anyway, he went to the hospital and his dad called all of us, right? All of his close friends and his family and everything else. Nobody was allowed in the hospital. His own parents had to say goodbye to him over Zoom when they pulled the plug. Oh, God. Um, All of it. It was right during the height of it all. And because he was getting out and climbing and doing something active during the pandemic, you know, when everybody else was sitting inside, his own fault for not wearing his helmet, so on and so forth. But terrible tragedy. But just imagine not being able to say goodbye to your son in that situation because of that whole heightened like we were talking about the heightened fear thing, right? The heightened the hysteria. Like if it, it wasn't even COVID positive, it doesn't even make sense. And, but they weren't allowed in the hospital. Oh. Yeah. Unbelievable. So, I mean, there's t- two tragedies simultaneously, right? The big ones that he died hitting his head. Of course. Climbing. Of Ooh. course. Yeah. What a way to go. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Poor guy. <laughs> oh, God. Um, but he, he died doing what he loved, though. He was an incredible climber and was very passionate about it. So, yeah. you know. 